The Gospel reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning to read from verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the Gospel reading. So as we come to think about the readings, let's just pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about the disciples and their reaction to your resurrection, so we may know new life, new hope, new strength. In Jesus' name, Amen. The readings today continue the story from Easter Day and continue in the evening of Easter Day when the disciples are still very scared. They've seen Jesus crucified. They are very worried that they too will end up the same way. They have also heard rumours that uh, Jesus is no longer in the grave and that some have even seen him alive. And so they meet together behind locked doors, I imagine to discuss things and to try and work out what is really said and to think through what he said to them. And as they're having that discussion, as they're trying to uh, correlate what has happened to them, suddenly, even though the doors are locked, Jesus appears amongst them. And they hear those words, peace be with you. But I imagine most of them begin to wonder whether that's just a, a dream, some kind of reality that they cannot be sure of. They don't understand who and why this person is here. Surely, surely Jesus could never have done this before. He couldn't walk through closed doors and appear amongst them and Jesus knows that. First, he greets them with peace. And second, he opens to them his reality that actually he is wanting them to understand. He comes and allows them to see and touch and feel who he is. 
that there really is a reality to this person, that it is not a ghost, but that he is the Jesus they know, yet somehow different, somehow one who is no longer uh, constrained by the limits of death. And he breathes into them the Holy Spirit. Of course, the Holy Spirit, we understand, doesn't fully fill them until the day of Pentecost. But in some way, it touches them at this point. And often as we uh, face all sorts of uncertainties and difficulties and things that uh, we do not know how to cope with, what we need is the gentle touch of one who understands us, one who recognises our problems and our difficulties, one who is there to help us to make sense of things that don't make sense to us. And so, as we come to God day by day, as we come to God week by week, we come to heal Him and ask Him to allow us to be touched by Him. Of course, in our reality, we are those who live by faith. We do not see Jesus week by week, yet we do know his touch. We know his guidance. We know things begin to click into place when we listen to him and allow him to enter our lives. When we allow a room where he is not to be filled with his presence. And as we do that in our own homes rather than in our churches, we are to experience that knowledge that he can, through his resurrection, through the power of the Holy Spirit, be there for us each day, each hour, each moment and wherever we are. Of course, Thomas, Thomas isn't there and Thomas uh, is often uh, accused of being doubting. But he's no different to the others. They met in much the same way on that first uh, Sunday, that first day after Jesus rose and they were doubting at that point. A week later Thomas is still doubting. He said, you know, unless I see him and touch his hands and put my hand in the scar in his side, I will not believe. And then they are there this time with Thomas and Jesus appears and he already knows what Thomas needs. He already hears what Thomas wants. Each of us will experience different emotions, different thoughts. We will have different lives in many ways. Yet God knows our innermost and deepest needs and thoughts and requirements. He knows when to rejoice with us for there will be and continues to be much that we can rejoice over much goodness that we have received, much goodness that we do receive. But also, each one of us will have our weaknesses, our areas of doubt, our areas of worry. God already knows those and he comes to us and says, here, here is an answer to what you really need. So as we come to him, we are to bring ourselves, our whole selves, and allow him to get to know us as we are, to affect and challenge us to become more than what we already are, to become more of what we should be. Thomas experiences God and finds in him an answer. And we have those wonderful words, my Lord and my God. Thomas realises that this person is extraordinary. Somebody to follow, somebody who is not just a human rabbi, but indeed is the Son of God somebody absolutely extraordinary. And he expresses that and he goes on to live that out in the rest of his life. He goes on to maybe be the one who uh, brings 
uh, Christianity to India. We do not know whether that story is true, but certainly somebody who goes out and lives out that reality of Christ as his Lord and as his God. A transformation has gone, come about in his life and he is now somebody different. For us, we need to know that he is Lord, but we need to allow him also to be Lord. We need to treat him as one who we allow to make decisions for us, to guide us through whatever we are facing. And we do that by seeking to listen to him, by coming close to him. St John explains, as he does in this story, that Jesus goes on to say, Happy are you who believe because you have seen, but those who believe without seeing will be even happier. We are those who can be even happier. Those who can have a strength of faith and belief that somehow surpasses all circumstances, that gives us strength and ability to cope uh, no matter what we face and wherever we are. Because we are those who discover that inner knowledge of God, which is even stronger than a face-to-face -face encounter. An inner knowledge of God which gives us the ability to grow and be certain, to take risks and to go out and serve. That inner knowledge is that which enables us to be those who follow him. As St John concludes this section of his readings, this section of his writings, he speaks to the, his audience and says, I have written these told you about Jesus so that you might believe, so that you might have faith, so that you might be certain that there is hope and a way that enables us to go forward. And St John then goes on to say, and in believing may have life. Life in all its fullness is what Christ has promised to us. And although we feel that we are trapped at this moment, we are not trapped. We are free to express our feelings, to free to grow in faith, free to know God and to share the knowledge of him with others. We are free to have a full life. We are able to look around us and be grateful for all that we have already received, be grateful for that which we currently have and be able to look forward to whatever is ahead of us. So we pray that this story of the disciples who were worried and Jesus met them, Thomas who wanted clarity and was met by God, and Jesus who tells us that faith can bring us great joy, it will be a strength to us, and that it will indeed help us to deepen our faith and knowledge in him. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, not quite sure why that decided to uh, get stuck at that point. Trying to get it unstuck was a slight issue, but uh, hopefully uh, we're okay to carry on. Uh, we're going to carry on with the creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so now we uh, come to our next hymn. It's What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So now we come to our prayers of intercession. Today's prayers are particularly apt for the situation we, were, we are in due to the current coronavirus pandemic. The response for these prayers is as follows. When I say... Lord, in your presence, the response is, we lift our hearts to you. Lord, in your presence, we lift our hearts to you. As we meet together in this new technological way, with God's presence in our midst, let us pray. We bring to you, Lord, the church in all its richness and all its need, all its diversity and all its division. Give us a fresh understanding of what it means to live in you. May all of us, both laity and clergy together, celebrate the reality of your presence among us, filling us with new life and new hope. Lord, in your presence, we lift, we lift our, our hearts, hearts to you. you. We bring to you, Lord, our nation, our world, our universe, all the areas that are fastened shut to hold you out, 
all the bewildered confusion about who we are and why we are here. All the doubts and insecurity about the future and all the searching for inner peace. Lord, in your presence, we, we lift, lift our, our hearts, hearts to, to you. you. We bring to you, Lord, our homes and families and all the joys and sorrows of our relationships. And as we are kept isolated in our homes, we bring to you the rooms in which we eat and work and relax and invite you into them all. Lord, in your presence, we, we lift, lift our, our hearts, hearts to you. you. We bring to you, Lord, those whom life has damaged and all who find it difficult to trust in you. We bring to you those who need refreshment and hope, comfort, healing, and inner serenity, particularly during this difficult time. Lord, in your presence, we, we lift, lift our, our hearts, hearts to you. you. We bring to you, Lord, those who approach death with great fear and those who die unprepared to meet you. We pray for those who care for them, be it in hospital, care homes, or at home. Have mercy on us all. Forgive us all that is past and gather us into your everlasting kingdom of peace and joy. Lord, in your presence, we, we lift, lift our hearts, hearts to you. you. We bring to you, Lord, the love of our hearts as we recall the extent of your love for us, which understands our frailty and insecurity and reaches out to us wherever we are. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So we join together uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us.
final prayer. Let us take the touch of the risen Christ and the peace that he gives out with us into the world. Let us breathe his life-giving spirit on all those who we greet this week. Amen. So may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and strengthen your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, both now and into everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>